Okay, so retiring for uh, planning for retirement or retirement for planning. Um, I love how the, the slideshow starts off with just one little simple message. Uh, start now. You want to start as early as possible. Um, because the longer you can accumulate monies, the more money you'll have. Okay. Time is on your side when you're younger. It's not on your side as you get older. Okay. Um, one of the things that we've been talking about, right, is the retirement goals. Right. Um, and I think that's one of the more important things to kind of think about. Your standard of living when you're retired is probably going to be a little bit different than your standard of living when you were working, simply because in retirement, that income usually goes down. And so depending on how steeply it goes down is really what you want to stop. You don't want it to be uh, dramatically lower than, than what you're used to. You want it to be just a little bit lower than what you used to. So whatever your standard of living is, um, when you retire, you will uh, probably need to assume that it's gonna be a little bit different than the standard of living you had when you were working. Uh, what income is gonna be coming in when you're retired is gonna be different than when you were working as well, because it's often gonna be less. And a lot of people start thinking, well, look, you know, um, as a lot of people have, think of the Northeast, uh, the West Coast, very expensive places to retire uh, because the cost of living here is relatively high. So then I start thinking, well, what if we start relocating? What if we um, decide that we're going to retire in Florida, or retire in Arizona, or retire in other places? Um, well, that has to be looked at too. Where, where are the options to retire if you are thinking of relocating out of New York? Where to? And what are the costs to do that? And what's the cost of living there? One of the most uh, important things that I had would talk with my parents when they relocated to South Carolina, because we're from Massachusetts, was the quality of health care. Because we were so used to, you know, the great health care we had in, in the Boston area, you know, uh, just like New York City, you know, Boston is a medical, uh, a lot of medical schools and, and uh, and very, very good with medicine stuff. Uh, when you move to another place, do they have the same level of care? Because as you get older, you're gonna need it, you know? Um, and so that was one of the most important types of things where uh, that's a cost of relocation you don't wanna get mixed up with. You wanna make sure you're gonna be going into an area that the healthcare system, uh, particularly for folks that are older, is, well regarded you know and and that's really important um what is it that you need to accumulate for retirement because as adam was pointing out to it's not like you have you're going to need roughly speaking a sizable chunk of money in a 401k or ira to last a long time if you retire at 65 or 66 or 67 you have a really good chance of living at least 20 years, okay? Particularly if you're in good health. You've got a really good chance of living 20 more years. A lot of people are gonna be living longer. Um, well, you need to accumulate enough money to last 20 years at least, okay? And so that is something that we use uh, the present value tables for. Right? If you are looking for um, if you had $2.7 million and you're going to be taking out uh, a certain amount for 25 years, how much, you know, how much can you take out or the opposite? How much would you need to live on a certain amount of money per month? You can use your future value, present value formulas for that. And then you need to design an investment program to have that nest egg there. But again, a nest egg indicates simply a, like a one-time thing. But again, the, one of the other goals is to make sure you're getting um, lots of eggs. Um, you're not just relying on one particular thing like Social Security or your 401k plan. You actually have a number of different eggs in the basket that's going to help you.
one of the most uh, problematic things is starting too late, which is why the first slide said to start now. Um, many wait until it's way, you know, it seems like it's early. Well, I'm already starting in my 30s or 40s, and I'm not going to retire till I'm 60s or 70s. might seem like it's, it's a long time. But it's actually, you, you can't take advantage of compounding. Right. You can't take advantage of compounding unless it's a longer period of time. Um, you can, you know, there's certain compounding that happens over 10 years, but it's better at 20, it's better at 30, it's even better at 40, 50 years. So the earlier you start, the more you will, your money will make money. Right? Your interest will earn interest. Another problem is a lot of people just simply don't put enough away because we have, we live in a consumer society. So we're tempted to spend all of our money now and not put anything away for the future. Um, one thing you have to keep thinking about is that you do not want to work or be la have no money when you're 85 years old. You do not want to be poor when you're very old. And because it's gonna be just so much hard. It's gonna be so much harder. It's better to tolerate a little bit of poverty now and put money away for the future to have a more comfortable older age. A lot of people aren't doing that. So it's making old age even more stressful for some folks. Um, some people are also, particularly the younger folks that, that are there, they're just not investing uh, enough in stocks or taking appropriate risks. They're putting their money strictly into things like CDs, which are paying nothing. You're not going to be able to retire if all your money is tied up in a CD. Um, it's not to say that it can't be part of a whole portfolio, but jeepers. Being too conservative in your investments means that you're not going to have the nest egg that you need in the future. You're not going to, it's, the compounding is not going to be enough. And here lies the biggest part of today's lesson, right? The idea of compounding has a lot of power. So let's take a look at two situations here. One is uh, someone who contributes $2,000 a year into a retirement account, say it's a uh, IRA, versus someone who puts uh, 5,000 into uh, an account per year. So $2,000 uh, per year in an account like an IRA, um, you're roughly putting in about 40 bucks every week, about 40 bucks every week. Whereas, um, and that's the contribution here. The contribution here is, is, a, is almost 100 bucks a week. Yeah, that's the difference. Well, look what happens. The accumulation period is very important. How long is your money going to be accumulating interest and dividends and so forth? Well, if you start very old, if you don't start until you're 55 and you're hoping to uh, retire at 66, 67, you're only gonna have roughly about a 10 year accumulation period. And as you see that, that $2,000 a year isn't going to grow, even at high interest, it's not going to grow into enough money for you to retire. And unfortunately, that's what we're, that's what we're with today. If the person had put 5,000 in a year, they would have had a lot more money, certainly, but certainly $79,000. This money is supposed to last, even at 10%, this is supposed to last for your entire retirement. Hello over a 20 year period of time at least, not much. So the accumulation period, look, as, as you go down, right? Let's say you start when you're 25 years old and you have at least a 40 year accumulation period, even if you're just setting aside 40 bucks a week at very low interest rates, that's gonna grow to 190 grand. But look what happens if you invest in stocks, which have been basically the, the, the S&P 500 has returned over 10% a year uh, for that time period. And it's closer to a million bucks. If you put a little bit more in, uh, almost a hundred bucks a week, again, as you see, as, as the rate of return goes higher, 2.2 million. You're gonna need technically, if we had no social security, if you didn't wanna work, if you didn't want to do anything, 
you would probably need about $2.7 million in an account to, to take from. And that would give you at least a, a reasonable income of at least probably four or $5,000 a month in retirement uh, for 25 years or, or more. You wouldn't run, you wouldn't be uh, running out of money. But the, the idea is, again, the earlier you start, the more your your longer your accumulation period, which means there's more compounding power of that money. So even a little bit of money, like 30 bucks, 40 bucks a week can really grow. That's not a lot of money. 40 bucks a week is not a lot of money, right? For some people, a hundred bucks a week is a lot of money, but jeepers creepers. If it works out well, hello, it's a pretty good amount of dough, okay? Um, and so that's, that's very, very important to sort of understand. Starting early and, uh, and appropriately investing is important, is important. When you're investing in very low yielding stuff, you're gonna have that compounding isn't gonna work as much. It's still gonna work, but it's not gonna work as much. Right. So if you put, again, if you can do the, the basic math, you put $2,000 a year in for 40 years, you put $80,000 in. Well, you're going to get 190000 even in a low interest. Um, that's still pretty good because all you put in was 80 grand, 2,000 times 40, 80,000. Got a hundred ninety, but even if you put 2,000 for 40 years, that eight grand could also be 800,000 if there's appropriate allocation of that in, in your 401k and your IRA. And in order to reach even this level of 10%, you basically can do that with a, a blue chip stock fund or an S&P 500 fund uh, has been returning 10% a year and more, more in, in many cases, more than that. Um, so it's not like it's out of the reach of a younger person without taking an enormous amount of risk to make a lot of money for their retirement. They're just not doing it. They're just not doing it. Okay. Um, and again, this is just 40 bucks a week. And that's not a lot of money. The more money you put in, clearly you have the power of compounding, right? If you put in $5,000 a year for 40 years, you put in uh, uh, two hundred thousand dollars, but you've got two hundred two million more than what you put in. Right. So um, the compounding effects are are critically important, and you have to take the appropriate risk once you do set up an account and you do fund that account. Make sure you have at least a portion of that in an index fund following the S&P 500. Make sure you have a portion of that money uh, in uh, stock funds that are either growth and income, blue chip, something that's not very risky, but yet look at the returns. Uh, some people might wanna do a little bit more risky because a lot of you had aggressive or moderately aggressive profiles on your investor type. Well, then you're looking at a, a growth funds, aggressive growth, maybe sector funds. Um, those are all more aggressive investment types that have been paying off for a lot of people over the long run. So just think about how much more that money would grow. So next time we're together, we're gonna look at very specific forms. We're gonna look at social security in detail We'll look at uh, 401ks and, and, for, and uh, pen, traditional pension plans. We'll look at IRAs. We'll also look how to set up an account. Um, if we have time to do that on Wednesday, we will. Uh, all of that, uh, depending on how, how the conversation goes. But we definitely will be doing all of that between now and next week. And then you can pick your investments. But that, that compounding thing is really all what retirement is about. And as you see it, I mean, how many of you could probably afford to put 40 bucks a week aside? 40, is 40 bucks a week gonna kill anybody? Probably not. 
Again, even if it's 20 bucks a week, it's still half of that. 20 bucks a week for 40 years, half a million dollars. Hello. It's not a lot. It's not a lot of, it's not a lot of sacrifice um, for a good payoff down the road, particularly when you're younger, because you have over 40 years. Now, a lot of you are, are you're 20, so you might have a, about 50 years. Imagine how much more interest will earn interest how much more your dividends will earn dividends because it's and it's just a little bit of money that you're that you're starting with just keep it's just got to keep flowing in you just got the thing is to do it regularly and then it just it, this stuff works quite well really really well and that chart is a little deceiving because that chart basically is a two thousand dollar it's a lump so every january 1st you're putting two thousand dollars in Nothing for the rest of the year. Another January 1st, put another two grand. Nothing for that year. January 1st. That's all that chart is showing you. Just one payment a year. It's better when you're doing multiple payments a year. Because then your dollar, dollar cost averaging year really starts working in your favor. So uh, think about it. Think about it. If you have any money, uh, if you earned any money from work, you can have an IRA, individual retirement account. Um, otherwise, you're you're stuck if if you are you want that four hundred one k, you got to be employed by an employer who offers one. That's the only way you get a four hundred one k. Is you have to be employed with an employer, and that's their retirement plan. Otherwise, you just can't say, I want a 401k today. I mean, you're not shopping at Walmart. Ah, okay. So you just, it, it's totally different. But that's really critical to understand.